All right, so we got a bit of an issue here because I can't actually reach my arm all the way into the back of this hole. Henry here, together with Adrian. We're on our way to Northbridge. Got a call from somebody who's got bees under their pool in a stone wall under the pool. I don't know how that can be, but we're gonna go and find out what's going on. Northbridge is just north of the city. Uh, just a few minutes, it's got a really cool bridge. We're gonna see it in just a moment. cool thing about that bridge is it was built in 1829 by a group of English investors back when there was you know not very many people in Australia and that suburb the North Bridge was worthless land you couldn't get to it because of this big gully and uh, they figured out oh, we're gonna build this bridge and then we're gonna cream it on the value of the land on the far side becoming more valuable but then there was some big stock market crash and uh, their company went completely bankrupt so didn't really work out for him. Well, we don't know exactly how deep the chamber goes, but the fact that the bees are clustered on the outside here suggests that the colony is just behind this stucco. That's the hope, is that they're not too deep inside. So here we are in Northbridge. This is uh, Richard, the, hello, the, hello. the homeowner. <laughs> how are you? And how long have the bees been here? Do we I'm know? I'm actually not sure. Mm. I'm actually not sure. So probably only two, three months max. All right. Yeah. 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 So we're January now. If the bees swarmed in September, October, November, December, January, that would be... That's sort of the normal time That'd be expect. logical. Yeah, September, yes, October yeah. is typical. Yeah, yes, yeah. 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 All right. So, so. And they've... Um, but they haven't really bothered you specifically? No, actually, no. I did a lot of gardening here the last couple mm. of days. Yeah. None of them even bothered me. I, I was okay. quite close to this. So yeah. Hopefully they are friendly bees. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, when I, when I get up close to them, they, they yes. appear to be friendly as well. So yeah. hopefully they'll be a relaxed hive. And even when I'm pounding on their home with a sledgehammer, it won't. Uh, oh, we'll see. It won't. <laughs> it won't set them off. Yeah. I do have an extra veil. I'll grab yeah. out of the car. Right. Yeah. So yeah. you can ply a watch from a distance like this. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You can chuck the veil on in case yeah, you're, you're worried about it. Okay. I can put it with the helmet. Yeah. <laughs> Got the honeycombs. I think they've easily been here for three months. Here is there's this piece of wood. It looks like an old part of the, yeah. the the mold for the concrete, and that's what they're stuck onto. That there's a small hive beetle. See, it looks like a tick. A tick. It looks like a tick, mm. but it's a beetle. Mm. Small hive beetle. Until 20 years ago, we didn't even have these in Australia. Yeah. And now we've got them, mm. and they can smell a beehive right. when they're flying around, yeah. and they'll move in, and they trick the bees into feeding them. Oh. Oh. And the bees can't, they, they don't have a natural defense against mm. these small hive beetles. All mm. they can do is kind of corral them in a corner. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. 
Okay. I think I'm going to set my machismo aside and put on the gloves. I've taken a few hits to the hands already, and uh, they're getting a bit fired up here. But at least we've gained, we're gaining access. Because this was all pretty solid when I bashed on it before. But this rock will remove, and possibly this one as well, to give us nice clear access to cut those combs out, rescue some of the honeycomb to eat, and hopefully rescue some of the brood comb to put into the beehive. And the combs are all the way over here. Mm -hmm. So when you ask about the bees biting you through a veil, one time I was doing some manipulations at night and I put a flashlight, a small torch into my mouth while I was working. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, a bee stung me on my lip. And of course, the, you spit out the torch, the veil comes off, the bee comes off, but then you lick your lips. So that was the first time I tasted bee venom because I could taste this really acrid, sour tasting venom when I licked my lips and I could feel the stinger in my lip at that point. Beautiful little nugget of honeycomb. Unfortunately, it's a bit dirty. So this will be the bucket that I'll feed back to the bees. Let them reprocess it. So that nugget looks absolutely beautiful. It's gorgeous. So I'll save that for the homeowner. That's an interesting one. Look at that green color. Slab of honey. Again, the, it's dark because it's been brood comb before. And it's got rocks in it. So that wouldn't be very nice to eat. So many bees. That's good, they're not going deeper. The bees become more relaxed at this state. See, they're not quite as violent. There's a bit of height there, but the fact that we're hitting honey at the top of these combs. It's all pure honey. Whoa. All right, so we got a bit of an issue here because I can't actually reach my arm all the way into the back of this hole. It goes all the way back there and extending three feet is the farthest end of the comb in front of me. So we're just gonna have to do the best we can. 
just in. Yeah. Through the glove. Yeah. Through the sleeve. Somehow. I don't know how they do it. So we can see that it used to hang this way, because that's where this dongle is. Oh, they're proper fired up now. It was so peaceful. Ah, I'm back now, a few days later, to check on the job. So a reminder, here we are, here's the pool. And it's down underneath the pool where the bees had taken up residence. So it got too late that night when we were here. It got too late for us to uh, fix everything up that night. So my son returned the next day. And what he did is pack the hole full of foam. So deep down into that cavity, packed some old pillows and some mattress foam to fill the void. And then he rebuilt the stone wall to bring it back to something close to original, but without the void. So now the bees can't uh, set up home there again. There just isn't the space for them to uh, reestablish and set up another colony there. The honeycomb was so, 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 so good. It's unbelievable.